Welcome back to Azure News with me, Julia. Horta informs Timor Leste's democracy process to the international community. While participating in the fifth conference of least developed countries in Doha, Qatar, the Timorese president also holds various bilateral meetings with leaders from several countries in order to build partnership, and he also informed the progress of Timor Leste's democratic system to the international community. Throughout bilateral meetings, Horta also mentioned about the reconciliation progress that had done by the Timorese, as well as the non occurrence of instability at the present time in Timor Leste. Primeiro, sempre marca presença Timor Leste e agenda. First of all, Timor Leste always take part in every international agendas, building partnership with various leaders and with some of ordinary individuals as well. And we told them about Timor Leste's success, and there is no political violence in our democracy, no religious and ethnic violence as well. I call everyone not to take revenge on others. To welcome each other in reconciliation is one of our greatest outcome. If we did not do so, Timor Leste will be in an instability, and they have loved to hear about this. As there are countries which been in conflict for more than 30 or 60 years, and it has not ended yet. While in Doha, Qatar, the Timorese president also met with leaders from least developed countries and delegations from developed countries such as Italy, Netherlands, Latin America, Africa, and the European Union. And those countries always keep up with the Timor Leste's and they complemented Timor Leste for its stability. Horta will request Azerbaijan to support potential Timorese women. Timor Leste's president, Jose Ramos Horta, traveled from Doha, Qatar to visit Azerbaijan in order to exchange the diplomatic relation with its leaders and to discuss the type of cooperation between both countries. Horta also have requested the financial assistance from Azerbaijan leaders as to support Timorese potential women and women entrepreneurs' activities in Timor Leste. Azerbaijan ride a rico boat of Tevis, Homina. Azerbaijan is a rich oil country. I was invited to come here three years ago, and now I have replied to it. And it took two to three hours drive from Doha, Qatar to reach here. Timor Leste does not have any relationship with them. And to initiate the partnership, we need to exchange the diplomatic relationship and begin to look into what they are capable of assisting Timor Leste. What was my idea? Since they wanted to build cooperation, my number one priority is to seek for fund in order to support needy women, business women, agriculture women, and women who are running poultry farm and livestock animals. Horsta added, in case Azerbaijan supports Timor Leste, it would also help improve the existing presidential program, which supports vulnerable and disabilities persons in Timor Leste. Fifteen people died after a landslide in Indonesia. Rescuers on a remote Indonesia island searched for signs of life after a landslide that killed 15 people and are awaiting reinforcement to find another 42 still missing. The landslides on Monday, March 6, 2023, followed six days of torrential rain and buried houses on a village on the island of Serasan in the Natuna region about 80 kilometers of the island of Borneo. Disaster Agency spokesperson Abdul Muhari said the landslide was estimated to have been 100 to 200 meters long. Natuna's rescue agency head told Antara News Agency that the military will be deployed to help the rescue's efforts and that some equipment have been dispatched, including extraction tools and lighting equipment. Fishermen fear loss of livelihood after oil spill in Philippines. Fisher folks in Oriental Mindoro, a province south of the Philippines capital said they fear they will lose their livelihood after an oil spill from a capsized vessel washed up on their shores. According to the Philippine Coast Guard, thousands of fishermen were banned from fishing and were ordered to stay ashore as authorities attempted to contain the oil spill. The tanker, empty Princess Empress, was on route to Ilolo province in central Philippines with 20 crew members and about 1,800,000 liters of industrial fuel oil on board when it encountered the engine trouble due to overheating. Philippine residents concern loss of tourism after oil spill. Residents of central Philippine province said that local tourism has been hit hard by the oil spill from a sunken fuel tanker after officials announced fishing and swimming bans in the coastal town of Pola. 
According to the Environmental Ministry, it is thought to be lying about 1,200 feet or 366 meters below sea level of Oriental Mindoro Province, though the information still needed to be verified. Like Enriquez, resort caretaker Rochella Lasak is anxious about the loss of income after the oil spill began washing up on the shores of Pola, where many residents largely depend on tourism for their livelihoods. According to the Earth Island campaign manager and analyst Robert Medrano, the harmful effects caused by the oil spill to marine biodiversity could last years and have a heavy impact on food supply to the locals. Filipino activists protest for women's labor rights on Women's Day. About 300 activists marked Women's Day with a protest near the Presidential Palace in Manila to urge the government to improve the labor situation of female workers. Clarice Palche, activist and Gabriela Women's Party spokesperson said, The Philippines has laws protecting women. Women are still being discriminated against and abused in some workplaces. We are here to call out the Philippine government to uphold the rights of women workers, to form organizations, to form unions, so that they can collectively bargain their rights um, inside their workplaces and inside the, the, um, the country. Anti-riot police briefly blocked the activists from holding their protest in front of the palace, but were later allowed a few hundred meters from the gate leading to the compound. A 2022 report by the Philippine Statistics Authority said about 12,492 women in the Philippines suffered some form of abuse in 2021, with more than a quarter of the incidents being physical abuse. Biden awards Medal of Honor to Black Vietnam War Soldier. We're going to talk a lot more. United States President Joe Biden awarded the Medal of Honor to Colonel Paris D. Davis, United States Army retired, for conspicuous gallantry. Then Captain Paris D. Davis distinguished himself by act of gallantry and intrepidity above and beyond the call of duty while serving as commander of detachment 83215th Special Forces Group Airborne, 1st Special Forces during combat operations against an armed enemy in the vicinity of Hong Song, Republic of Vietnam, June 17 to 18, 1965. And although the men who were with him in that June day immediately nominated Captain Davis to receive the Medal of Honor, somehow the paper, the paperwork was never processed. Not just once, but twice. But you know what Captain Davis said after learning he would finally receive the Medal of Honor? Quote, America was behind me. Biden said Davis, who is black, was nominated for the Medal of Honor almost immediately after he served in the firefights in Vietnam, but the paperwork was never processed. Thailand light candles in honor of Buddha on Makabucha Day. A total of 100,000 lit candles illuminated in the Thai temple in Patum Thani honoring Buddha on Makabucha Day. Damakaya temples has fully opened for thousands of worshippers dressed in white attire and monks to participate in a ritual ceremony. Two thousand monks across Asia joined the event lighting up 100,000 candles. When we want to honor our Lord Buddha, we have our traditional way by lighting up the lantern for offering to Buddha, which has been performed for almost 2,600 years until now, said Venerable Sanit Wong, a director of the communication department of Wat Pra Damakaya. The devotee also expressed their feeling about being at the actual event. Makabucha Day commemorates the day when 1,215 monks gathered to be ordained by the Buddha more than 2,500 years ago. Malaysia Foreign Prime Minister said accusation against him as political persecution. Former Malaysian Prime Minister Muhyiddin Yassin said accusations were politically motivated after he was charged with abuse of power and money laundering over projects launched under his premiership. <laughs> Muhyiddin pleaded not guilty to all six charges and told reporters the accusations were organized political persecution. The former premier has also been banned from leaving the country. The charges come just three months after Muhyiddin lost a closely fought, divisive general election to Anwar Ibrahim and are likely to increase political tensions in Malaysia, ahead of crucial regional polls this year. 
Muiding and his party have faced grave investigations since losing the national election in November, with the party's bank accounts frozen by the anti graft party and two leaders charged with bribery. Thank you everyone. We will see you soon. Have a nice day. Bye.